Ask yourself this, what's the least amount of money that it would take for you to be able to retire on? Give us a second, we'll go over it. I have conversations uh, week after week with individuals that are retired or very, very close to it. And the, the, the tendency I think for most people is to, uh, first of all, uh, wonder if the amount of money that they've set aside for retirement is enough. Um, second, wonder if they've set enough, if they set aside enough money, how to invest it. And then third, how long will it actually last? What if you looked at it a little bit differently and you just said, what's the, what's the absolute minimum that it would take to be able to retire? It kind of goes back to that, um, take this job and shove it. Right, remember the song, and it's like, uh, hey, you know, what would it take? I mean, if, if you really, really hate your job, or you really, really want to retire, um, what's the bottom line? So to get to that bottom line, what you have to do is you have to calculate, uh, first of all, your expenses. So what is it going to cost to maintain the standard of living that you want? And it's different for everyone. But then you have to adjust that for inflation and taxes moving forward. And so what we found over time is. Uh, the, the, the sort of a traditional approach, um, there, there are lots of them. Uh, hang in there on your portfolio, just deal with the ups and downs. Uh, there's a rule that's, that's, that's old now, but people still use it, the 4% rule. Uh, there's a, uh, another rule out there, subtract your age from 100. That's what your allocation should look like. All of those strategies are based on hang in their approaches. A certain percentage of stocks, a certain percentage of bonds, settle for that average rate of return. And the reality, I think, for most people is things have changed. So in my experience, what I really, really like to do is educate individuals on not just the most traditional things that you've heard of, stocks, bonds, you know, what have you, CDs maybe, um, what are all of the investment options that are available to you? And if you had access to all of those investment options, how successful would you be? So if we go back to what's the least amount of money that I would have to have to be able to retire successfully, we'll define success as maintaining the standard of living that you want. Look at taxes, look at inflation, look at the underlying investments, but make sure you're again, you're, 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 you're playing with all the cards. You need all the information. You need to know what all of your investment options are. So find an investment advisor, find a fiduciary that will actually sit down, take the time to explain to you what all of the investment options are and help you make an informed decision. So let's use an example. Uh, let, let, let's, let's say a million dollars, right? I mean, it, uh, we remember the commercials, what's your number? Um, a million dollars is a lot of money. It doesn't matter who you are. It's still a lot of money. Maybe it's a million dollars. Maybe it, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. Um, but it's a nice round number. So a, a question that we get quite a bit is, uh, let's just say I, I've got a million dollars. I'm going to retire. What should my expectation be on that million dollars as far as uh, what should my earnings be? How much can I withdraw? How long would that money last? Uh, typically, when we do uh, financial planning, we want to run that financial planning well into somebody's 90s. Uh, I hear people say all the time, well, uh, you know, my family didn't live that long or I don't, I don't think I'm going to live that long or the opposite. Sometimes some people say, well, you know, uh, my family lives well into their hundreds. Um, 95, I think, is a, is a nice number. So let's say you had a million dollars and you're trying to figure out how to um, retire, maintain your standard of living through uh, at least 95, maybe it's just you, maybe it's you and a spouse or a partner or what have you. Um, how, what does that look like? I mean, I think that's really, really confusing for people because they don't have all the information and, and it's our job to help people with that information. Um, so uh, I mentioned the 4% rule. Um, to me, 4%, I think is, is, is kind of low. Um, but I understand why the rule is in place. The rule is in place for sort of hanging their portfolios. And the idea is uh, you make just enough and there's just enough volatility and then potentially you don't run out of money over time. Um, what I really, really like to have a conversation about is uh, it, it's the what ifs. What if you had an actively managed portfolio? What if you just weren't hanging in there? Um, what if somebody was taking the time to explain to you what all of your investment options are. 
When it comes to, to, to investing money for individuals, when it comes to being a fiduciary, when it comes to investments, um, nobody should actually come to you with uh, a guaranteed rate of return unless it's something like a CD. Um, but they, sh in my mind, they should at least be able to have a conversation with you um, about what your expectations should be. Like, like what should you expect? So, so to me, 4% is pretty low. Um, if I take a look at all of the investment options that are out there, um, what if that number was 5%? What if it was 6%? What if it was 7%? Uh, I, I think a lot of people are apprehensive about investing. Um, you know, it, it, if I had an investment that was 8% uh, and I could guarantee that every single year, obviously a lot of people are going to be very, very interested in that. But that's not how markets work. It's not a guaranteed fixed percentage. Um, what happens is people wind up with an average. So what, in my mind, what an investment advisor should be doing is having a conversation with individuals about what their goals and expectations are. Um, but then, then if you take the time to share all of the investment options available, um, I personally don't think seven or 8% is a crazy number. Um, it's not a fixed return, but if I look at all of the investment options that are available, I, I, I personally think 4% is low. I, I think the expectation for an investor should be in that seven to, to maybe 9% range. Um, and I know there are a lot of people out there that don't feel that way, but I think it's because somebody hasn't taken the time to explain all of the investment options that are available. And, and, and again, be a resource uh, when it comes to investing as opposed to a salesperson. Thank you for watching. Go to guardingyournestegg.com for your free and objective personal financial plan.